Please, just don't hurt us. My, my sister and I have, have nowhere else to go to find out what happened last time on the Incursible Party. Gozer's gonna start tying a rope around Falzarin's waist. Well, uh, 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 Gozer, Gozer, what are you doing? Throw I, you I didn't into river. Yet. Wait, we already went over the plan, Falzarin. Now, either you walk out there on your own or Gozer will chuck you. Bryn is watching is Falzarin, cool? and Bryn decides to just run in and try oh. to go across because she's like, this guy is walking too slow. This is ridiculous. You see the the two guards. One of them is it's kind of his his voice is kind of keep like raising as he's talking with these two people, and see the other guy next to him's got kind of like a clipboard and is you know asking them questions and scribbling notes. All right, the two of you may pass. I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna go. Hey, how much uh, how much they pay you, you know, to be a, a guard here in Victor? Oh, that's a strangely personal question. No, no, I mean, you just asked me how much money I had, so I thought we were on that friend level now. Oh, uh, my name is Roland. Thanks for asking. No one ever asked me that. Yeah, I know. As a guard, you just you know, nobody ever really appreciates. I, I can I can understand. I mean, uh, do, do you have a last name, Roland? Is, uh, no. is it no. right by any chance? Oh, I do, of course, give the cloak stall to the... It's just one of you that needed a cloak, right? Yeah, I, I, I needed a cloak. Yeah, I assume I'll, I'll it's not gonna, cloak, f- not gonna fit well, so it's probably dragging a bit, I assume. I'm two foot eight, I believe. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to visit the Seven. local Victor seamstress to get it hemmed, probably. I'll just, oh, Shaft would like that. I'll just roll it up, <laughs> stick it in my belt. Quickly, quickly, sister, put on your mask. The adventure continues in Victor. So you all enter the city, and it's like nightfall now by the time you, you've kind of been processed by Roland. And, uh, yeah, you enter the city. What do you want to do? Do you want to immediately follow his directions? Yeah. So, yeah, as you kind of recall his, his loose uh, directions he's given you, you kind of make your way into the city, and... This city is, uh, again, like I said, not uh, as large as Drukal, but it is definitely uh, larger than Zexa. And as you're kind of following these, the directions uh, that you're headed in the direction of uh, the big clock tower in the in the middle of the city here. Yeah, I'm basically looking for some place for uh, either a magic type place or some place that my my whole goal here is to find somebody to remove this curse. Nina is a secondary thing. If she's sick, I may just want to stay away from her. Who gets rid of curses in this kind of... That's what I... I'll ask Falzrin. Hey, you're the one that told me about the curse thing. Now, what, are we looking for a magic, 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 magic shop, or... A what shop? A you magic, magic, right. magic shop! <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, Shafta, I I haven't ventured very far. I've certainly never been to this city, so... No, I mean, you're... where would one go to have a curse removed? Cleric. Yeah, a cleric. A witch, perhaps. Yeah. All right, let's find a church. Chapel of some kind. Uh, Okay, why don't you roll me another history check on Victor, then? Have I been to Victor before, Leland? 20. Uh, No, you have not, Bryn. So, Shaft, you know that there's no, there's no, like, real, like, churches around, or at least there weren't when, when you were here, but you're, you may, you may even be, uh, best suited finding someone to help you at one of these these triage centers. Just you know, kind of as uh, Roland had described, they're really basically it's almost like they're like like a hospital that they have kind of set up to to keep these people basically safe from inflicting additional harm to themselves or anyone else. And there, you know, there there are like caregivers there that are in charge of, of running these places. So Roland told us the sickness drives people mad, right? That's what that's right. the, the illness is. Right, and that's that's part of why they need to take your weapons, so it's safest for everyone if there are not weapons moving around the city for people to possibly succumb to the sickness and then be able to use against other citizens. Are we seeing other people walk around as we're walking down the streets? Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a pretty heavily populated city. Again, uh, larger than Zexa. Is everybody wearing masks? They are, yes. 
Okay. This we're at, at that point. Unless you guys have any reason you don't want to go see Nina, let's let's head that direction. You guys good with that? Is is Nina? You said Nina's in one of these these places where they're caring for sick people. According yeah. to Roland, I'll okay. follow you, Chef, but don't expect me to go inside the hospital with you. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, I'm not getting yeah. sick. Falzern's a little bit weary as well. I, I'm happy to come with you, Chef, but y- you might be going in by yourself. Okay, well, I'm already cursed, so I mean, what, what, how how much worse can it be? What's well, a little mania? <laughs> That's right. All right, Gozer, go. Gozer, go. You're going with me in in the place. No different. Okay. Thuff's already crazy. <laughs> Great. Take your mask off, Thuft. <laughs> no. No, no. King, King King says no. Okay, let's go. So uh, as you're again, you're you're kind of following to the, t- to the tail end of the directions. You actually kind of see like kind of like makeshift signs, kind of pointing its way. Uh, as you know, they're still clearly admitting new people into the city, so they have uh, directions to to one of these facilities. And again, it's always just kind of pointing in the direction, and to, uh, you just are continuously moving closer to this this clock tower in the city in the in the middle of the city. And you're kind of now getting, really getting a true like scope of its of its height and size, as it just kind of looms above everything. And and just to clarify, I was here like two years ago, and this did not exist at all. That's right. And this is stone. Uh, you're still a little too far away to really tell. Okay, but still quite an undertaking in a very short period of time. Yes, absolutely. Is there any blue light coming off this clock tower? That's there are, what I was there's, wondering. Uh, no, no blue lights. No blue light special. It's uh, it's like barely even illuminated, really. As you get again, you're getting closer to it. You can kind of see now, like where, where it has like the clock face, kind of right above it. There seems to be like an open, you know, like like if it was like a bell tower, like the very top of it would be like the open section where the bell would be hanging from and it would ring, kind of thing, right? So it's kind of like walled, but like half walls. So you could, someone you could stand up there like it's a little balcony and, and basically peer uh, out of the city. And that's kind of where all these, where the torches are out there and kind of lit. So the clock is still kind of visible even in in uh, at uh, nighttime. But again, you follow these signs and you make it to to uh, this building that uh, it's you know it's like a cluster of buildings. It's like a, like a big long like almost like a townhouse, right? These all these buildings seem to be like kind of connected and the sign points you right into to this uh clinic for lack of a better term all right i go in i go you guys uh you guys want to wait here goes are you with me i'm with you tuft yeah Thuft. Bryn, uh Bryn slides down against the building and just takes a seat i'm gonna, her back I'm gonna on wait the wall. outside with Bryn. yeah good luck in there chef okay i walk in yeah, and as you as you walk in, you see kind of like a waiting room. There's a couple other people like sitting, kind of waiting, and there's like what would be like a receptionist desk and uh, a woman sitting behind it. Okay, I walk up. Hey, hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm uh, here to see a friend of mine. Well, we don't usually take visitors. No, but this is a unique circumstance. I need to see Nina Dari. Is she family? Uh, sort of. Yeah. Probably the closest thing to family that, uh, that either of us have. She's like a sister to me. She, uh, kind of... Oh, she's my sister. Leaves through, uh, kind of a stack... <laughs> she leaves through a stack of... Stack of papers. So she kind of stops. You know, kind of fingered down, tracing down the length of the, the page. Uh, I see. And, uh, what was your name? Uh, my name is Tobias. Oh, uh, would that be Mr. Forge? Yes. Ah, okay. I see you're here on our accepted, uh, ad- admittable visitors. Uh, yeah, please, um, if you go through this door here to my left, uh, a, a ward will be able to escort you to, to her room. All right, I go. I look at Shaft in surprise that he was actually telling the truth. <laughs> so, uh, I go. Thuff doesn't know Nina. Thuff Thuff doesn't know Nina. Who's Nina? Who who is this? Shh. Thuff, quiet. I bonk uh, him on the head. Yes, King. 
now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and would your is your friend? Will they be accompanying you? Yeah, if it's okay. Well, I, it's a bit uh, un- unorthodox, but I, I suppose maybe numbers will be safest. So we're a little short-staffed, Kurt. Sure. Okay, I'm with you. She kind of like takes this little bell and, and rings it as well as you're kind of moving to the store. She pointed to it. Yeah, a human kind of comes out. He's you know like dressed in all kind of like this white garb, actually more of more of a robe kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he and the the receptionist kind of nods at him and he takes you back, kind of gives you maybe a little funny look as you are kind of covered in in fur, mm-hmm. <laughs> head to toe, and you look look pretty wolfish currently. And, uh, a, which Roland had no problem with, so he's clearly a... <laughs> <laughs> I told him I needed a shave. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of leads you down this long corridor, and it, which kind of you, you having, you know, a basic sense of direction. It's like running kind of perpendicular to uh, how you entered. So as mm-hmm. if it's like running the length of how you would be walking parallel were, were you outside walking down the street on this this like you know large connected building windows and stuff that i can see or is it behind yeah the... yeah there's there's uh rooms on either side of you know every 20 or 30 feet down the hallway and you again you, there there actually is no like windows into these rooms or anything but you can kind of hear like the, the shuffling of feet um you hear like the odd like scream and like people yelling from some behind some of these doors, you can kind of hear the brief like rattle of chains chains as you as you walk past one, and the 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 man just takes you down about halfway down this corridor and stops in front of in front of this door. He pulls out kind of this big key ring and unlocks it and kind of opens opens it up and just motions just. Uh, Keep your distance. I say, uh, I say, hey, Gozer, you might want to stay here by the door. Uh, you know, just in case, make sure I can I sort of quietly say, can get back out, if you know what I mean. Okay. Okay. I walk in the room. Do I see her? Yeah, she. you see her. She's uh, lying on a bed. She's, like, kind of, like, chained to it. Like, exactly kind of what you would picture, like, restraints, you know, wrist restraints and ankle restraints. Again, you get the sense that, like, you know, she's clearly not a prisoner, but she's there uh, and restrained just to protect her from herself, basically. Is she wearing a mask? She's not wearing a mask, no. And she, she, her head kind of, like, snaps around as she's heard the door open and you enter. And you just kind of see, like... Like you don't, you barely even recognize her. She's all disheveled, and her hair is a mess. And she's, you know, as she's just been struggling, clearly against her restraints, and doesn't doesn't really show any amount of recognition, even as you walk into this room. Okay, I walk over to her, staying a, a fair distance away, just in case she was to break her restraint. And uh, I go, uh, "Hey, Nina, how you doing there? Who are you? Who are you?" It's me. What do you want? It's me. It's your buddy, Chad. Get me out of here. Let me out. Let me out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember. Let, let me out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's get out of here. Uh, you're looking, uh, you're looking like you're not doing well. No. What, I, what, I, what happened? I, I feel great. I feel great. Just, uh, I, these people just, they, they put me in here. You gotta let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Okay. Who did I say I was? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, who, you're who you say you are, I believe you. Come on, let me let me out, let me out. Tell me, tell me one thing about me that you remember. You're, and she's like, her face kind of like scrunches up in frustration with you. Clearly flush frustration. You're small, you're short, you're so short. Ah, now that's the Nina I know. <laughs> so I, I walk over and uh, how does she does she look like she's not in her own mind? I mean, I can yeah. pretty much tell that she's yeah, she's out of absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, I'll say so. This uh, looks like you're doing all right. I mean, you you, you you look fine. How how's the shop? The shop, those those worthless employees, worthless. Oh. Oh yeah, 
But what what's the problem? I mean, I mean, if I let you out of here, are we going back to the store? Are we going back to the 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 place? You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. The pl- uh, yeah, I like the place. I know you like the place. Oh, I like the place. That's for sure. So uh, here, I, I, let me let me get you out of here. And I and I is the is the guy still watching? He's uh, kind of outside the door, just outside the door with Gozer. He hasn't like walked off or anything. So he's you know he's not like you know staring right at you, but he's he's within earshot and not a, not a, not entirely oblivious to what what's going on. So before I let you go, what's happening in the city here? I, I mean I know you're okay, but some of these people seem crazy. <laughs> look, look, I, I I'm, I'm not like these people. I, I, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, don't, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just I'm asking you what's going on here. Listen, Everybody's listen. wearing masks, and I've been oh. Take that mask! You gotta have to take that mask off. I've been, I've been, a, I've been, a, I've been asleep this whole time, but now I'm finally awake. Take your mask off. Take it off. Now, not. I'll tell you, uh, I'm not looking the best right now, and I, I don't want you to see me this way. Really, the mask is sort of, yeah, sort of hiding some, some. You know, I, I, I don't look good, and and when I want you to see me, you know, like we used to be, like it used to be, you know. Let me clean up first before... I'm just going to leave the mask on for now. You okay? Get out. Get out. If you're not here to get me out, then you're worthless to me. So I walk back out to the to the guy that let me in, and I'll go... So, what are you guys doing to, to help this, this sickness? What's, what's, what's the cure for this madness? I, I wish there was a cure. We... There's no cure? So far, all we, all we can really do is keep them restrained so they can't hurt themselves or anybody else. How long until they go? Until they go? Do they die from this sickness? Well, I'm not going to lie to you. We have had some casualties. Yeah? When did it start? Tough to pinpoint. I mean, maybe if we could pinpoint it, we could really get a handle on what the cause is exactly, but... As far as I can tell, it's been at least three or four months that people have been just violence everywhere. So, so this sickness broke out. You guys started grabbing these people up, restraining them, and you learned somehow these masks that we're wearing will keep people from getting the sickness. You're pretty confident that that's, that's helping. I mean, we just take any precautions that the, the mayor suggests. We, uh, what else are we to do if... So no. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't I'm not privy to numbers. I don't, people, they don't tell me anything. I just try to take care of these people as, as best I can. Where do we find the mayor? Well, probably at uh, at the mayor's office. Yeah. Well, who is the mayor? He's a, a new mayor. Actually, he came in office uh, shortly before all this madness started. He's really handled himself really well. His uh, his name's Quincy. All right. Uh. Well, let's. Can you take care of Nina here for me? I'll be back. And we'll probably, uh... We'll probably see if we can do anything to to make her feel at least a little bit more comfortable. Maybe some coin would help, uh... If you take a little better care of her, maybe? Well, uh... It's like, what would you... What do you... What, do you, what would you suggest? Well, I mean, you know, give her, uh, An extra candle and, uh... Feed her, feed her a little nicer and I give him a few gold pieces. You know... Make sure she's well taken care of. I understand. I understand. You know, she has a, a, a visit scheduled tomorrow morning with uh, with our, our head doctor here. Um, she's if if you'd like to come by and speak to her, she should have. I would love love more to. information for you. Okay, uh, let me know what time. I mean, roughly in the morning. Tell just uh, make sure the doctor doesn't leave till I get back. Sure. Sure. She, I, I, be, I believe Nina's first on our list, so it, it'll be uh, shortly after daybreak. We'll be back. Thanks. What was your name again? My name is Jimbo. All right, Jimbo. Nice name. I got to know who to ask for. Thanks. Uh, we walk out, and I walk out to the front and go out to where those guys are. Why you no know, ask about fur? What? Ask them about fur. Ah, uh... uh Okay, I get down to the front desk. I go, uh, 
You, is there a, a doctor I can see to talk to right now? Are you... She kind of leans back in her chair. Do you feel ill? No. No, I want to talk to him about Nina a little bit. I know the doctor will be here in the morning, but is there somebody here I can, you know, maybe ask a few questions to? Well, I, I suppose you could speak to one of our one of one of the doctor's proteges. That's perfectly fine with me. Okay, and she kind of she rings her little bell again, and same Jimbo kind of comes through the door. She, you know, says, "Well, can you fetch fetch the doctor uh, that's here currently?" And uh, he nods and walks back through the door. Is that is that Jambo the doctor? The doctor's, no, the doctor's assistant. <laughs> The doctor's assistant. It's yes, Jimbo and Jambo. Jimbo and Jambo, or yeah. Dr. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm outside. I just had to chime in. <laughs> he yell in the window. <laughs> Jimbo comes back with, uh, with another human. He's dressed in very similar things that Jimbo's dressed in, but it somehow looks a little, little fancier. Hey, got a question for you. What do you know about curses? Well, curses. Yeah, not like saying bad words and stuff. Like, you know, when you can't, when something happens that it sort of can be like a I don't know, poisoning or some kind of magical transformations and stuff like he that. He have fur. Yeah, uh, just asking for a friend, really. And I scratch, oh, I scratch with my claw on my face. <laughs> Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, a friend, yes, yes, yes. Well, um, why don't you come back with me to my office, and perhaps we can I can take a look at you. Okay. And so he takes you through a door that's on the receptionist's right, kind of on the other side, and he leads you back through a similar a similar hallway, but fewer rooms, not nearly as long, and, you know, the kind of second door on the left, he kind of opens up and... You kind of walk into like this, like fully furnished office. You know, bookshelves kind of lining the walls, and a big, uh, big wooden desk, and a couple chairs seated in front, with a like a little love seat kind of on your left as you, immediately as you walk in. Okay, does he sit down? Yeah, he kind of takes you. And he pulls out one of the the chairs uh, and motions for you for you to sit. Okay, I walk over. I pull his scimitar out and lay it down on the desk, and I go chink. That cursed me. I need you to fix it. My, my word. How did you get this in here? I, that's not really your concern. Right now, your concern is whether you make me better or this goes through you. Roll me an intimidation check. Can I help? Can I, like, glower at him? Yeah, uh, you can aid. 17. Absolutely. Goes a roll a d20 to aid. <laughs> I, I rolled a 2. You do not aid. No. <laughs> 17, so. I'm laughing at Thuft. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so cute with his little mask on and his ears sticking up. He's Thuft's playing with his ball of lint that Roland refused to take from him as payment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor uh, looks at you, and you you can actually see on his, his robes, he actually has like a name tag. It says Dr. Axley. <laughs> And he, you know, regards you as like, well, we've seen uh, quite a bit of violence these past few months, and I don't think we need to see any more. I agree. He picks up your scimitar here and kind of examines it, holds kind of a hand out. Well, I, I believe this should do the trick. He kind of walks back around to his desk, pulls a drawer out, pulls out like this flask of this like green kind of viscous substance inside inside of it as he you know pours a little bit onto his hand almost as if it's like he's putting like aftershave on his hands right mm -hmm. but instead of putting it on his own cheeks he kind of walks up to you and kind of pats you on your cheeks kind of rubs it into your wait your we're aftershaving my hair away <laughs> well <laughs> you, you wanted your appearance to change he pulls out a pulls out a straight razor <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he does. He continues to pour some of this liquid onto the blade of the sword as well, and you know he kind of utters some mumbo jumbo that uh, you don't quite understand, and the blade kind of starts to glow, and like bright, and it just gets brighter and brighter and brighter until it snuffs out. He picks it up, hands it to you. 
I, I believe this will this should have solved your problem. How do I feel? You you again you don't feel any different because you didn't really feel any different when your appearance changed. But as you're kind of taking the sword back from your outstretched hand, on the you're kind of the back of it, right? This patch of fur, you kind of just see it like receding, and it kind of like shrinks away into nothing, and your your nails go back to normal, and you kind of feel around in your mouth and your your teeth, the points of shrunk back down to, to regular halfling-sized teeth. All right, I, I pull five gold out, I lay it down on the table, I take the scimitar and sheath it again, and I go, thanks. Still cursed? Nope, we're all good now. Uh, will it happen again? Uh, not if I'm I asking the don't doctor, not you. This. That's what I'm asking. Please don't use that inside the walls of Victure. If he use it, will he be cursed again? I would not suggest risking using it again. Okay, you, thanks. You, you give that to Roland. I'm going to hang on to it for mm, now. Give it to Roland. I don't have anything against Roland. He worked with me. Would be funny. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Now, yes, please, if you'll excuse me, I, I do need to continue my rounds. All right, leave. Go back out. Those guys see me fresh as a daisy. Wow, Shaft, you look great. I know. I what? liked you better with hair. What happened? Who, I had a who shave. Who fixed this? You got a uh, shave. Okay. Is it going to grow back? I certainly hope not. I gotta. I gotta remember this. Actually, some sort of magical shave. What? What happened? You know what? It. I don't really understand what happened, but I know I'm feeling better now. I look he got fabulous, of course. You think you look fabulous? Green I liked good. you with the hair. Yeah, well, you know, to each their own, but I do all right. I do okay either way, but this way, eh. Thuff kind of saddles up next to Brynn. I thought has hair, and he kind of combs his <laughs> sparse, like, greasy, goblin-y hair back. He <laughs> Brynn actually, it. like, takes her gloved hand and just pat, pat, right on the top of the head. <laughs> Good Thuft. Thuft is very pleased. So, uh, we got what we wanted, right? Let's get the heck out of here before we get sick. Well, sort of, here's what we learned. It Apparently, this, they got a new mayor, I don't know, three months or so ago. And that's when this whole madness started happening around the city. Don't know if we want to do anything. You... I guess there's really no reason to do anything. Nobody's going to pay Not us. Not cause or problem. Yeah, I'm thinking it's not our problem. How close are you to Nina, Shaft? How uh, how concerned are you with her sickness? Well, I think she's probably beyond repair, the way it sounds, but it would be nice to... It, I mean, I don't want to see anything happen to her more than already has, but yeah, I don't know. I'm torn here. I, I think we should probably do something because, you know, something's obviously going on here that if this disease spreads, it could be a big problem if it gets to to crawl or, or anything else. But let's not be the people to spread it. I want to get the heck out of here. What do you think, Faldrin? You seem to be the voice of reason occasionally. Uh, I agree. I'm. I, I think if there's some possibility that we can stop the spread of this to you know surrounding cities. You think there's the mayor's got something to do with this? Why don't we go talk to him? Yeah, it might be worth the talk, and if it doesn't seem like this is going to pan out well for us, I would probably just come back in the morning and put Nina out of her misery, and then we can move on. Closer needs sleep. How about how about we go get some food and a drink? Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll run into somebody we can talk to. Sounds good to Falzer. Bryn. Bryn looks at Shaft, like, annoyed that to eat and drink she has to take off her mask because she's, like, acting really germaphobic and annoyed. Okay. That's a good point. point. (laughs) Yeah. I wasn't really considering that either. Uh, (laughs) At the tavern, everyone's masks are off. It's just chaos. If it is an airborne virus, it's probably not best to eat or drink anything. You're probably We can get room service. (laughs) Yeah, let, anyway, so let's head, go. let's go back to the let's go back to the gate. Get your weapons and and uh, talk to the guard one last time before we decide to take off. Sleep outside. You gonna give him your uh, scimitar? 
Hell it's no. A parting gift? Nah. No, I want to hang on to this. I think this could come in handy at some time. I mean, it's a nice weapon. How do you know it's not going to curse you again, Shaft? I am not going to use it again, but I could give mm. it to somebody else to use. Oh. So you think it's still going to curse the next person who uses it? I don't know. I know I'm not using it anymore, and I can probably sell it for a pretty penny. That seems fair enough. Bryn starts walking to the west gate. Back to back to where you came? Yep. Okay. And again, as you're walking, it's it's not much later at night, but again, well, you have a convenient clock tower that you can kind of peer up and, and see the time. It's 9.30-ish, 10 at, 10 at night kind of thing. Seems like the streets are, people on the streets are kind of starting to dwindle down, but now you can kind of hear, you know, like noises you would hear as a, a, a bar door is kind of opening and closing from as people going in and out, kind of just the murmur and the, and the or the, not murmur, the this cacophony of kind of voices echoing into the night from these, from, from the these crowded bars as you're walking down these streets and you kind of, you pass a couple as as we look in, are people drinking and eating and and things with their? I mean, yeah, they do. They do. They, do, off and, they with yeah, their they, mouths. <laughs> they're not like off, but they're like you know, kind of like lifting it up as they're taking sips. And uh, so, some some people have like straws. They're kind of looping underneath their masks from their like tankard of ale. Is there? <laughs> is there anybody like out front staggering out of the bars and stuff? Not quite. Yet it's again. It's not. It's not like you know, early morning here. People are kind of just getting started as they're. But uh, again, you still see people milling in and in and out of out of the bars. And actually, you get uh, you kind of get to what seems like maybe like this bar crawl alley kind of thing. Is there's kind of multiple of them within a pretty short distance, and you kind of see this guy at the at the end of the street wearing no mask, and he's kind of got like a. a bundle of these flasks that he's kind of shoving in people's like pet he's peddling basically so like, yes come come on enough of these useless masks i have the cure please five gold will get you one flask of cure uh do an insight check sure can, yeah can we all line yeah up? you can all all try to do an insight check 14 for me 18 for bryn Look what Thuff doing now. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> Falls are enraptured by Thuft as well. I the, I the so, uh, Shaft and Bryn, you guys are pretty suspect that in a town full of people that are afraid of getting infected by something that this guy happens to have a cure. Right. Shaft, why don't you buy me one? I'll walk up to the guy. Hey, Bryn, you want to... You Hello. Come up and get some. Hey, how you doing? I'm quite well. I mean, look at me. I mean, how's how are sales? Health. Sales? Well, sales admittedly are not uh, not doing as well as I am, my friend. What? I with the cure right here, and you have the cure. How people, can people uh, not want to buy this? They seem to be too afraid to take the tr- take the risk. Shaft, <sighs> he's mad. He's not His mad. His are all over those flasks. He's a businessman. Hey. A businessman who's down with the sickness. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that song by Jovi. Yeah, Jovi, <laughs> one of Jovi's hits. Well, my uh, God my rest his soul. Fine young elven new friend. Well, if I was if I was down with the sickness, as you say, you would uh, be looking at the short end of maybe a maybe a broken flask. I'm certainly not mad. Yeah, I've seen what the sickness can do, and, and this guy seems just, he, he's legit, really. Seems a little hyper to me. A little overactive. Tell me about your uh, your potion there. What's it what, What's it made out of? Well, that would uh, be given away the trade secrets. But it's safe, I assume. It's safe. Sure, and he kind of pops one off and takes a swig himself yeah. to show that uh, it's certainly not poisoned. Oh, well, that looks... Uh... I, I, like I said, I don't have the sickness, so I don't need to buy anything from you. But, you know, what, I mean, obviously you having the cure and all, you know what causes the sickness, right? No, uh, you, uh, you can see one does not need to have all of the knowledge to make a knowledgeable assumption. 
So I'm able to take my vast, vast experience in the field of disease and poisons and apply that knowledge to any situation I may come upon. Wow, uh, you, you are smart. What gives you this vast knowledge of disease and such? Why, just years of study. What, do, what have you studied? Diseases and poisons and such. Are you not a doctor? <laughs> That's what I'm confused. Uh, what do you call yourself? What do you call mere, yourself? Merely a title. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so, you asked his name. <laughs> he, I, I did. <laughs> I just want you to come up with another name, but. <laughs> well, uh, my name is uh, Malakar. Nice name. I like it. It sounds good. It really, really is a, a knowledgeable type of type of fella. That's a good name for you. And trustworthy. So, Malachar, you're not wearing a mask, so what's your theories about this disease? Well, people seem to think that it's airborne. <laughs> Nonsense, if you ask me. I, uh, I, I, I believe its origin lies somewhere in the, the psychological realm. Right, so you can't get it from, like, eating, drinking, or anything. You think it's just a madness that people come upon people, not even airborne. You're just saying... No, no, again, I... Who knows the, the starting point, but, again... Psychological, my friend. That's why this, this cure, just offers a bit of mental fortitude. Resistances of such. It's been working for me. What's in it? Again, trade secret. Can't, can't argue with his logic. Hey, look at him. The guy's doing fantastic. Sound of body and mind. So how much, uh, how much you selling this for? Oh, only five gold. Five gold a flask. Five gold? That's sort of highway robbery, isn't it? Well, unfortunately, some of the ingredients are difficult to come by. And admittedly, this is only one serving. Won't quite give you permanent resistance, but for a time, you may be able to spend a day or two in the city, carefree. That's a... it, only, it only lasts a day or two? It does, unfortunately, vary person to person, but yes, a day or two at most. What do you, uh, what do you think of Quincy? Well, I'm no, I don't live in Victor. I am just... Uh, as you can tell, probably a, tra- a traveling salesperson, so I've never really had a run-in myself with the mayor. So you travel from sickness to sickness? City to city. I, I have other ventures. I'm not not just a one-trick pony. Chef, this guy's a sham. Like, let's go. Hey, Don't be- drink that crap. Don't be- between waste you and your gold. Me. I take immediate offense, and I, ref- I reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. You, I my don't want your service. young elven Bye. friend, will not receive a cure. I hope you catch this disease. And suffer greatly. Oh wait, That's wait! Great, this is but this Shaft, is really you'll going suffer downhill. Greatly if you drink this crap. Just uh, don't... Uh, look, I'm talking to this fella. I don't, I, I don't think he, he's. Look, between you and me, I mean, you know, you really, scam, you really right? got a good deal going here, right? Like I said, sales are not very high. All right. Well, thanks. What did you say your name was? Malak, Malak, something or Malakai. Malakar. 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 Uh, nice to meet you, buddy. And you as well. Let's get the hell out of here. Yep. He goes. He goes back to shouting as you kind of can hear him trying to draw in customers in the distance. Okay, I think we're gonna go to the the gate and 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 get out of the city. You guys, you Roland guys ready I... to go? Yeah, let's go yes. see if uh, Roland gets is there and get your weapons. Yeah, we have minute for quick Roland right. We need to we need to find a good place to sleep tonight, Shaft. What are your? I'm not sleeping in the city. No. You think nope. we can find a place to hole up on the outskirts of the city? I'd feel safer out there than in here. Yeah. I think that's not a bad idea. Now, if you remember right, I think there's a tower just south of Victor here. Maybe it might not be a... You have to go through the woods a bit. Yeah, but it's a hell of a lot closer than Goldham. But the paladins might be at the tower... I don't want to stay anywhere near them. I just want to go see a tower before we go to Goldham. Get some information, see what we're dealing with. Oh, oh, for morning. sure, for sure. I just don't want to, like, plan to go sleep in a tower tonight, Shaft. That's no. a little crazy. No, hell no, I'm not going to sleep in a tower. I don't well, think it's close enough saying. for us to get there. Uh, no, let's get let's go get our weapons night. and then go find a place to, ca- to camp for the night, and then we'll go check it out tomorrow. Bryn takes her little ticket and slams it down on the counter at the coat check girl, like... <laughs> Give me my longbow. Yeah, you guys kind of make it back to the gate. They have like a, a this makeshift storeroom, like kind of right adjacent to the gates uh, that they've seemingly hastily thrown up in, a, in an attempt to try to 
try to temper the, the, these violent outbursts. And yeah, Roland is uh, still on duty, unfortunately, pulling the night shift. Hey, Roland. Oh, hello again. Your name was... Uh... Shaft, yes. Axe! Yes. Oh, uh, an axe, yes, don't... I axe have your now. axe, don't worry. I'll, I'll go and retrieve it. Oh, actually, I'll have my uh, replacement. Uh, Jerry! Can you go and, and fetch... Uh, these four, these four, uh, oh, no, three, there's, you didn't leave anything with us, right, uh, Falzo? Falzern. That, <laughs> yes. that Falzern, yeah, that's right, I just have my walking stick, which, um, oh. as you saw earlier, is not a weapon. You all look, you all look healthy, that's good, that's good. So far, so good. Yeah, it was pretty lucrative for you today, really, I mean, we were Doesn't hoping to Chaps stay. Doesn't look so much better? Yeah, yeah. You, you got a nice shave while you're in there. Yeah, I feel a lot better. I saw the dentist. Got our teeth taken care of. Got a nice shave. Took a took a, a little bit of a shower. Everything looks good. Yeah, you uh, you you used a, a clean razor. I hope. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only oh the God. best for Shaft. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah uh, so let me ask you a question roland well i got you here uh where do you eat in the town i mean don't you feel weird at the, all the disease going around you, you eat and drink in here i mean aren't you a little concerned i've been in those kitchens and frankly they're very well maintained. Everyone wears masks while they're cooking and cleaning. All the food comes in and out through very secure means. Everything's sealed when it comes in, and then when it goes... I think it's very safe, personally. I mean, you've been eating the food. I have been. Uh, there there was one incident about a week back where uh, someone in the kitchen did become ill, but uh, no one else no one else did, so Ill with I assume it was unrelated. With the sickness, though. Yes, yes. How, how long have you been a guard here? Uh, as long as I can remember. So... At least ten years? You were you were here before the new mayor came into town. Before the tower was here, actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, so... You know, they built that thing pretty quick. I was here a couple of years ago, and... You know, what, what, what spawned that? We just needed a... We needed a tower. Well, you guys did a great job of building one quickly. I, I have to say that. And then the mayor came in, this this Quincy guy, and that's about the time you said all this stuff started happening. I mean, that's what I was told. Oh, I, I suppose it is around the same time. I never really thought of that. It's probably a coincidence. Quincy, a, a nice guy. Have you met him? I mean, does he does he come and visit the guards occasionally? Around when he came, he did. Uh, he did do a round through. You know, he he said he'd like to to see the people who are guarding the city. So. We met him briefly. I didn't. I didn't get to talk to him personally, but I was. I was talked to by him. Sounds like good management. Yeah, he's, he seems nice. He seems nice. I haven't seen him recently, but uh, yeah, I had a good impression. I must say. Oh, sounds like you like your job. Like like your buddy. That well, no, he didn't like his job all that much, but they pay you shit apparently. Yeah. But it must be because you work with such. Nice management that you want to stick around and, and be a guard, right? Well, they pay us surprisingly well, considering. All right. Did, uh, did, what's his name, Jack, come back with the weaponry? <laughs> what was your buddy's oh, name? yes, uh, it looks, it's, uh, uh, man, I, I actually don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> He's new on the job, so. I think it was Jerry. 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 Yeah. It. It's, it's, Jerry, the new, your new trainee. Forgot. Yeah. Before we leave, Roland, um, you know, are, are there any, is there any talk, you know, in the alleys or rumors uh, that come out when, when people have had some drinks into them about what might be going on, you know, any, any gossip that you've heard? Oh, I've, I've heard a few rumors. Leland, what rumors have I heard? There you go. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, aside from the sickness... Rumors, uh, like you said, the mayor was very, very public uh, once he was first kind of uh, came into office. But yeah, he's been seen very rarely. People seeking an uh, an audience for, with him are hard pressed to to really get in to see him. And kind of other than that, outside of Victor, 
it's very hard, difficult to miss the the at night, especially the the large uh, towers in the southwest uh, easterly distance that are just emitting this this blue light. And uh, other than that, the sickness is really the talk of the town. Everyone's just very scared. They just they just want it to be over, and they they really do hope that Mayor Quincy knows what he's talking about, and they believe that what he has told them is the cause and what will keep them safe. They, they really do believe that. So that's what he knows? Yeah. Okay. So what are you going to tell Faldron? <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Touche. Per- personally, I, as I haven't seen the mayor in a while, I, I am suspicious that, uh, that the mayor may have also fallen ill. And, of course, someone in that kind of position probably don't want that getting around. But don't tell anyone I said that. Yeah, so. that would that would That's certainly sow some, uh, you know, perhaps even rioting and terror in the streets if people found out that the mayor could be uh, a victim of this. People would be going insane. <laughs> That's right. More, more insane than already, yes, yes. Now, um, there's this, there's, there are these towers that are kind of, you know, encroaching on the the southeastern borders of the city. Do, do you think that they're uh, this blue light and the things that are surrounding them might be uh, might be contributing to any of this? It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Have you heard tell of anything going on in Goldham, which is also kind of close to these towers? Any people passing through the city who've come from Goldham? So Roland uh, doesn't, since he doesn't, he predominantly works the west gate, but on the rare occasion where he's, uh, you know, maybe covered a shift on the other side of the other side of the city, the the gate, of course, that the eastern gate being basically facing Golden, right? It's just kind of on on either side of this this uh, these dense woods. Uh, yeah, he's he's certainly spoken to a few people again, taking his names and the next of kin and kind of coat checking weapons that uh, people seem to be leaving Goldham in hopes of finding you know a, a better place to live as Goldham is is being kind of constantly terrorized by by just beasts and like like feral beasts kind of driven from the the surrounding forests but uh, that seems odd to you falls in considering that Victor is uh, proximity wise much closer to to the edge of the of this forest but fixture does not has not had any problems like that okay so despite being raped by a forest no uh, wild animals that are behaving erratically um as is happening in golden which that's right isn't very close to the forest that's right yeah hmm. our city's quite safe at least from the outside <laughs> <laughs> so Roland, you ever you ever make your way up to Dracol? Oh, ah, uh, a long time ago. I mean, you you seem like a guy. You've been here a long time. You must like Victor, but Dracol's a great town, and I got some connections. If you're looking for other employment, I like you. I think uh, I can give you a, a name of a guy to talk to. You, you're a pretty hefty guy. You look like you've uh, you can hold your own, right? I can. Yeah. I got a I got a guy that might give you some some really good coin for protection if you're interested. I can give you his name. Yeah, let uh let me know. Why don't you just put it in the cloak as you give it back to me? Sounds you know? like a sounds like a plan. I write something down and I put it inside there and I hand him the cloak. I said, just tell him uh tell him Shaft sent you. I will. Thank you. A wink and a wink and a finger point. <laughs> Doesn't translate to podcast. It's a wink and a, a wink and a gun. <laughs> I get I got you rolling, and then I turn around and walk away. Okay, Shaft, are you and your boyfriend done now? Let's go. I'm I'm already walking away. <laughs> so am I, as I say that. Perfect. So you you guys exit. Thank Roland for his kindness, and uh, exit the western gate of, of Victor. So do you guys want to just kind of get a little ways away outside of the walls and just kind of camp out for the rest of the night? Yeah. Yeah. 
okay, how how long do you want to travel? You want to kind of move? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about taking the shortcut through the woods to Goldum, but then you said feral beasts, and now I don't know. Well, it sounds like there there aren't much, many feral beasts around Victor. We might have safe passage around the, the southern side of the city. And, we, you know. we sleep outside city, but not in woods. Okay. Yeah. That's what you are we do, going Bowser? to the tower that's south of Victor to go investigate, or are we going straight to Goldum? We need to go to Goldum to speak to the mayor of Goldum and uh, find out more about... Okay, well, someone earlier had brought up going to that tower, so I'm just... That was Shaft. Shaft, are you, are you sure we want to we wanna take time going all the way south? That's going to be quite a journey through the woods to check out a tower. When... Well, the journey to the first tower is actually shorter than the journey through the woods to Goldum. Right, it? but but this job is is for Goldum and for the tower closest to Goldum. That's, that's our, adding a lot our, to our journey. Our job is to take the power out of two of these towers, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and Detmer did uh, express that while he didn't have all the information, there may be more information, important information that you could get from the mayor of Goldham. So it may be it may be beneficial to to speak to him before trying to tackle one of these towers. You may get a little uh, again extra important information that could possibly mean life or death. So I'm looking at the map there and going between Victor and Zexa. Is there a bridge that goes over the river? Yes, there is. Like. Yeah, again, that the road that it kind of cuts through the the northern half of the the forest, surrounding forest. Yeah, it uh, it'll have a river over, over or a, a river over that bridge. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Falzrin, you're suggesting we head towards Zex, I go across the bridge, and then go straight to Goldham from there. That's that's what I think is the smartest thing to do. We need to know as much as we can about what we're going to be facing in these towers and, you know, be as prepared as possible. We, we could be in for quite a fight. So how about we uh, we travel out to the bridge if we can make it there in, in, a, in a fair amount of time? Well, see, you'd have to circumnavigate the entire city, right? All that if you want to, yeah. yeah, you'd have to walk all the way around the city. So you definitely... Uh, Again, you'd be you'd be going into like being awake for more than a day, kind of thing, and, and rolling for exhaustion, kind of thing. Altern- alternatively, yeah, you could get like just us. You, I mean, you could camp within sight of the, of the city walls, or maybe try to make it to the edge of the forest there, south of the city. I I, should, I say south of the city to the forest. Yeah, Gozer, Wrong you didn't want to sleep. Wrong direction, isn't it? You didn't want to sleep in the forest, but uh, what do you? What do you say we sleep just outside the forest and then walk through the forest tomorrow to get around the city? Well, we're going to take the road up to Zexa. But we're we not going to go get, through the forest. Yeah, the why, why wouldn't we go out the west gate and go north and go around the city that way? It looks because like that it's seems like a, a shorter direction to the bridge. I'm fine. we got to go around the city one way or the other. Is yeah. there a difference in, in distance? Daniel? I don't think so. Um, yeah, again, the map's not quite to scale there, but... Yeah, there wouldn't be much of a difference, but North North Route would be away from the edge of the forest where, according to Goldham, feral beasts are coming from, so that might make sense. All right, we'll go north. Okay. You ca- you talked me into it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, re- I railroaded you right into the <laughs> north. <there. laughs> God, you're the worst DM ever, right. Lincoln. Choo-choo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we take a, we'll take a rest. Okay, Are we taking so a long rest? Do you want to yeah. get back up to the river? Again, that's like a couple hours away. That would put no. you at about midnight-ish, and then you could sleep, take a long rest in the morning. Could follow the river to the bridge. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, what do we... I think so. Why don't we do that? That would also put you kind of on the... Again, on the other side of the shore where you, you know, found Thuft and had your fight where... Thuft yeah, I don't said. think we want to get that close to the river. No, no, no. I don't want to go on the other. Yeah, I think we just get outside the city and stop there and, and sleep for the night, just outside the city, but near the city. You know, within eyesight of of the city walls. Then. Yeah. Okay. So this is Great. what Roland sees. We walk out. We head south. We walk a little bit. We're arguing. We turn around. We go back. He sees we us walk north. north. Then we sort of turn around a little bit and go back towards. I wave at him every time we go by. 
<laughs> Hello again. Hi. Standard, standard practice for the incorrigible party. <laughs> All right, we're resting. Great. Long rest. So, first watch. How do we usually do this? Do, I think uh, Shaft goes... Is it Bryn go or... I'll do, no, Bryn, I'll do Bryn first goes watch. first. Yeah, she meditates. Well, no, I'm not going to meditate on my first watch. I'm going to watch. Oh, okay. Okay. Bryn first, then Sha- uh, falls in? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Shaft, Shaft, you you want to go... I want to go at dawn. Last, yeah. Yeah, I'll you don't have night vision, so you want to go last. Why is Roland getting his bow ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're within crossbow range. <laughs> Don't hurt me. <laughs> pew pew. Okay, great. You guys uh, settle in in for a long rest. Okay. We want to do a uh, Pap. You want to plug some stuff? Thank you very much for for joining Thanks, us. By the Pap. way, that was really good. Absolutely. Yes. Thank oh, you. Oh, hey, no problem at all. It was fun. You're good at making stuff that up. That was great. Yeah, that was a lot Roland of fun. Roland didn't die, so he could possibly come back. <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hoping I might run into him in Dracol working for Frank. <laughs> yeah, that, that was clever. I, I like the way that you led that into that because it, it does bring the opportunity to come back no matter where you, Absolutely. you all go. So, so, so Pap, do you want to uh, maybe plug, plug anything, like your maybe Twitter handles or? Yeah, I mean, if you want to check me out, I'm at uh, BoardPep. On Twitter, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it right now. Uh, are you still doing your uh, Pokemon Go Twitter? Oh, I do. I have a Pokemon Go Twitter that's uh, Pokepep, and uh, and I'm on Instagram. I guess as both Board Pep and, and Pokepep as well. I uh, admittedly haven't been posting as much on there lately, but I'll get back into it. I promise. I did not know about Pokepep. Well, the I'll weather's finally nice again. Yeah, w- winter was hard. I got there was the nice part of winter where I got out and was able to take some nice pictures in the winter, but then it turned to that like muddy, gross thing, and I, I don't know, not really a lot of opportunities to get out taking pictures and stuff. So no, no, no mucks laying around. Couldn't catch any of them. No, I know <laughs> I never see Grimer and Muck around. Those would be great pictures in the mud. Yeah, they totally <laughs> would. <laughs> okay, great, cool, awesome. And that's our show. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. For your own musical inquiries, contact jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. All other music and ambient noise is courtesy of tabletopaudio.com. The Encouragement Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. Visit criticalhitdesign.com for all of your graphic design needs. You can find more info on the characters and world at encouragementparty.com. Enjoying the show? Have any questions or rules corrections? Email us, contact at incursivalparty.com or reach out on social media. The Incursible Party on Facebook and Instagram, at Par on Twitter, using the hashtag AfterPartyIP for a shout out during our behind the screen After Party episodes that drop every fourth release. Happy adventuring! The top floor of the clock tower is illuminated by a flash of bright red light. A short, stout woman, almost as wide as she is tall, steps through what appears to be an open doorway. The vibrant red light diminishes. The open doorway, now a solid wall of roughly hewn stone. The woman surveys the room. Two human skulls, ablaze with emerald green fire, float ten feet in the air on either side of a large wooden table. A figure, stooped over it, stands with its back turned to the woman feverishly working on something. The woman stares for a moment, the silence broken only by the audible tick, 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 tick of the clock's retrofitted mechanisms above them. Hello, sister, says the woman. I see your city has had some interesting visitors recently. The figure finishes her work, tossing a small bag made from stitched human flesh to the end of the table. It lands softly in a pile of similar bags, these ones clearly filled with something, their yellow stitching pulling the flesh taut on the verge of bursting and spilling their contents. Ah, leave the wizard untouched. That one's mine. Go. Have your fun with the big dumb one. She'll fill one of your bags nicely. A slow, wide grin spreads across the figure's face. 
revealing a mouth of sharp and blackened teeth. The woman looks up to the clockwork mechanisms, focusing on a small metallic sphere built into the center of it. Her eyes begin to cloud over, becoming a milky white color. A minute later, they return to normal. Quickly, they're leaving the city. West Gate. The stoop figure continues to grin, giving a curt nod. Yes, Grandmother Isabella. The figure begins to shimmer as her form turns from opaque to translucent to transparent, disappearing from view. <laughs>